against reigning world champion Robbie Lawler. He joins us now. Does UFC veteran Tyron Woodley, with a 15-3 and record, you think he would be the man in line? At UFC 201, they say he will fight his former training partner, Robbie Lawler. Well, T, what do you think? Should you fight Robbie Lawler at UFC 201? Uh, is the ink dry on the contracts? Where is this fight? Um, no, we have not signed a contract yet. Both of us have agreed to the fight. And um, I think Robbie Lawler personally would like to fight on a car that he feels the pay-per-view sales would be a little higher because as champion, you start you know start to get a piece of the pay-per-view pie. And I think he's looking to try to get us um, fighting on 200 or 202 if Conor McGregor's fighting on there. Um, B, I'm just excited. I'll be prepared whether it's 200, 201, or 202. And I'm just, you know, get my mind and body ready to be champion. If we wait till 201, it'll take place July 30th at the Phillips Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. Here's my problem with that, Tyron. It's five months since your last fight. Uh, it's been more than five months. It's been um, almost 18 months. I was scheduled to fight in October, but I did not fight because um, Johnny Hendricks had some complications and he was unable to make it to the scale. So I fought January 31st of 2015 was my last actual um, competition. So it has been a while. What, when, when you think about a career, there's so much that goes into it. Business management, of course, uh, fight selection. You get to be uh, a little more, uh, a little more choosy as to who you fight because you want to climb that so-called corporate ladder. Robbie Lawler seems to be that, that guy in front of you. He's a former teammate. You guys were never really at, at weight. I should say training partner. What does it mean to you to fight Robbie Lawler? I mean, I wouldn't call him a former teammate. We still fight for the same team. You know, I used to train with Robbie when I was an amateur fighter. Um, he had a gym called the Hit Squad in Granite City, Illinois, which is probably like 15 minutes away from St. Louis. So when I was coaching at Southern Illinois University, SIUE, I used to drive up there and I used to wrestle with him and Matt Hughes and get some sparring in with some of their guys. So I knew him and had a friendship and relationship before he actually officially joined American Top Team. It just says something about the team that we fight for that you have the champion and you said you have, you know, top contenders in the weight class. It's just the growth. That's the goal of the team is for every fighter to try to reach their maximum potential. And it just so happened that we were in the same weight. So it's no love lost with me and Robbie. You know, we were bros before blows. We're going to be the same way afterwards. And um, it's, just, it's just something that if I was a champion and he was basically trying to position himself to see if he was the best and provide for his family, I wouldn't deny him that opportunity either, and um, I think that's where, where his mind's at. We're talking with Tyron Woodley. Uh, will he or will he not be on the card at UFC 201? I go back to your your last fight, Gastelum. Uh, he missed weight by 10 pounds. When you're a pro, how does that happen? It doesn't happen. Uh, when you, you miss weight by 10 pounds, you just didn't try. You just had a basically lack of discipline. Um, it's not just a wrestling thing. Um, weight cutting has been in, in boxing and combat sports for a very long time. So you know the weight class is not a bingo where they dig in the, the, the big bubble and pull out a number and say, oh, today is 180. You know the weight class. You know what you need to do. You also know your body more than anyone. If you're a person that's, that's fighting, a, the flight, the fighting the gene that, that's keeping you overweight, you got to be a little bit more disciplined. If someone, you know, is a, a slower person, they got to be a little bit more grindier in the octagon. If someone's faster, they got to, you know, be able to, you know, lay the power shots. So you know your body, you know what you should do. And he knew that he had issues with weight, and it didn't come the night before, the day before, or even the week before. He knew those the um the, the forthcoming week. So it just showed a little lack of professionalism, in my um my opinion. And the same thing with Johnny. Johnny's a former, you know two-time NCAA champion we had to make weight three times and at the time he was wrestling you know um he he had to make weight scratch and then his last last one or two years is when they started giving him one pound allowance so he knows the name of the game as well mm. five foot nine 170 pounder out of American top team making his home in St. Louis Missouri is our guest he would he's in the Nike hot seat today the money comes with championship belts Right now, we're basically servicing a debt, a debt owed to you. You've put in your time. Do you think you're being treated fairly by the UFC? You know, I, I think that the UFC has given the, the, the fans too large of a voice. The fans think they have the right to say who should fight, what, when, where, how. you got to realize there's so many UFC fights 
back to back every single weekend. It's very hard for them to keep up the actual the history of what happened in the division. I could have claimed that I deserved a fight before I fought Rory McDonald, after I beat Dung Young Kim, after I beat Kelvin Gastelum, before Carlos Condit fought, which me and Johnny beat, and then they scheduled me and Johnny to fight each other. So if you think about it, it's not that I'm just all of a sudden, after not fighting since Gastelum, deserving uh, for, for being off for a year. It was that I was deserving before, I was professional before, and most importantly, I was patient before, and now it just makes sense to do the right thing. I mean, you can only... You can only have the circus act for so long, and you have to get back to the true and actual sport where the top guys are fighting each other because they earned their way to the top. But uh, dare I say, you have fought the top guys. You fought Jake Shields. He was the Strike Force champ. Carlos Condon was the interim champ and fought for the title there. Rory McDonald. Everybody you've had, Johnny Hendricks. It's not. It's not difficult to see that uh, there's there's maneuverings going around backstage, and I'm not quite sure why you have not, from the very beginning, been the UFC favorite. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I know the danger that lies in your hands. You're about as well-rounded a fighter as anybody uh, I've seen. If you go back and look at your record and how you've won, uh, it's it's absolutely amazing because you're, you're a well-rounded guy. You've got five KOs, five submissions, five decisions. That's a 33, 33, 33. Your 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 losses, and I can count them on one hand. One by uh, uh, TKO, uh, no submissions, of course, and then of course she had two decisions. Uh, and I think one of those easily could have gone the other way. So it just makes sense that uh, you know you keep doing what you're doing. Are you altering the 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 challenge in the training room at all? Yeah, you know, I always look at what you know what I need to work on. You know, it's a lot of things. Games, you know, part of my game that people, um, you know, haven't been able to exploit that I've been blessed to have time to um, fix. You know, it's different things I want to work from a striking aspect, even different things I want to work from a wrestling aspect. Some things that work exceptionally well in college that we think in the octagon they don't work. So I'm looking to bring some of those things back in and, and, and definitely on the ground. You know, I'm approaching uh, my black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So with being an All-American in wrestling, a black belt in jiu-jitsu and, you know, having professional level hands um, in the striking department, I feel like I am the most diverse and well-rounded fighter, and I'm probably, if not the most athletic athlete that the UFC has on their roster that can put all those things together. So I think with those things added together, my fight style, uh, you know, my ability to be well-spoken and marketable and being professional should be rewarded, but you have to, you have to look at our sport. What's being rewarded these days are, are the people that are unprofessional, the people that aren't showing up to press conferences, the people that are failing the drug test, the people that are not doing what's required, or the people that are flicking the middle fingers and dropping the F-bombs. Those are the guys that are making the most money, that are getting the most rewarded. And in no other sport have I ever seen in my life where the person that's the least professional makes the most dime. I just I just never seen it before. At 34 years old, perhaps today more than ever, he is the chosen one, Tyron Woodley. Next champion for the UFC. Gosh, I hope he gets an opportunity to prove that sooner than later. Look for UFC 201 against Lawler. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown, Nike Hot Seat special guest today, T. Wood. T, thanks for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it.